Okay, we're gonna do another test. Try to do the test cube again. And uh, it's almost up to temperature. Using what, 170 watts or so. The heater block is up to temp. So, there we go. Okay, maybe this will work right this time. Didn't set it up the way Mendel did, I told you. I put the, the Z stop switch down on the bottom here. So, we'll see. Looks like it's printing pretty good. A lot of vibration. This is why I needed to. I just need to adjust to that stuff. But I'm hoping it'll print. I'm hoping it'll work. I don't mind that it goes slow and stuff. Just that it goes up and prints up. Oh, it makes a lot of vibration noise. That's not. You go over here back to Proner Face. You can see in green what is being printed. And then you can see what the printer is doing. Sorry about the glare, but the sun is coming up. It's like 11, 12 here, and the sun is on the south side there. And it's just coming through the windows, and there's nothing I can do about the glare. So. The Gen 7 board is working like crazy, so... Yeah, I don't know what this is doing. Oh, it's doing honeycomb infill. That's why I was making that noise the other day. Okay. Maybe I will have a cube at the end of this. That will be great. this thing actually makes a 20 millimeter cube, that'll be something. So, I mean, this is its only third test run print. I built a machine back in 2016 and couldn't get the firmware up on uh, that Mega 1284 chip. I mean, I had help, but then it just, you know, there's a, there's a chip in here, that, that big old chip right there, that Mega 1284P chip, and Marlin and them had a lot of problems trying to write code and everything for that chip, for, so, I don't know, but it looks like this thing is going to print a cube. That'll be awesome. My first print. So. Alright. And let's see. You go over to the watt meter over here. And you can see it's doing about 60. It's around 160, 170 because of the heaters. So, that's awesome. So, I had to, you can see the holes where I had the Z stop switch 
before, and that's what the manual tells you. Put it up there. Don't bother. Put it down there. Because <laughs> I think Marlin and all is set for down there. I don't know. 5D is what they the wrap used in the beginning. The information is like nothing specific. So this is awesome. I can't believe it's doing this. Waiting all this time to do this. No. All the adjustments, all the the planning and and everything, nights of, of doing adjustments and everything. So and I had to figure out how to do the the heater bed you gotta put from pin two to pin three, you know. You're using twelve volts and stuff and and that gets the whole bed hot instead of just the upper half or the lower half. I adjust this using two note, post-it notes. I don't know if you can see that there's too much glare in this place. But I, I put them together and then I adjust the head to that. So the table on this thing is like really weirdly out because it's really high on this side and low on that side. But I measured the distance between the upper rod and, the, and the, the, the table mark and the upper rod here and the table mark, and they're equal. So, and I did that with a caliper. I got a, a digital caliper and I used it as a depth gauge. So, and I tweaked it in as much as I can and then I tweaked the bed as much as I could, you know. So this is this is cool so far it's it's building. I can't believe it. <laughs> so the whole thing was is whether this power supply, this power supply here is a 400 watt and you have to have like 22 amps on the 12 volt line, at least that otherwise, it's not gonna work right. So. And we're still building. Look at that, everything is working. So cool. About 160, 161 watts. It'll cut, the watch changes, the heater's like, when the bed stops heating, you still have the, the printer head going. The hot end. Now the, the heater bed is going. So that's when you get your, uh, what do you call it? Raisin wattage. But I'm like surprised this power supply worked because this thing is light. It's all get out, this power supply. I mean, you can pick it up and fling it across the room with no problem. You know, other power supplies that I had weighed at least like two or three pounds. This thing's like a box. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't know if it's a pound or not. So, well that looks almost like 10 millimeters. I'll be able to print the Mendel 90 parts if this comes out square. That'll be so cool. I built a printer out of scrap stuff. I mean, yeah, I bought the J head. I had to end up buying the motors because the motors that I had were out of old dot matrix printers and they just didn't have the torque on them. You know, but like, I had screws, the screws laying around and I built the plates out of um, pieces of scrap metal. I had scrap aluminum things around, so I built those out of that. This this roller is from one of the Dot Metrics printers, you know. 
um, the belts are off of the, their timing belts off of sewing machines okay I did buy this thing up here but this is a, a plate from a, a utility box okay the pole in the back is off of a Swiffer from that my neighbor threw out you know um, the board I made the complete board myself using uh, G schematic and all and all the parts different parts that came off of it from TVs and everything else uh, I had to buy the drivers okay um, and these two MOSFETs but everything else like came from other stuff you know so I'm trying to recycle everything I can so I don't know how long this thing is going to go for does it say it said 13 minutes or so it said 66 layers so I'll probably have a few more minutes to go but it's it's getting there Unreal. Can't believe it. Finally it's printing something. That is so cool. Oh, the glass that I got? That's off of an old scanner. You know, I didn't go out and buy that glass. I found that scanner in the, in, in the garbage and I picked it up and I used it for parts and I took the glass and I cut it myself and I put it on the bed. So... That's what that's from. Boy, this plastic smells. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to put an exhaust fan out the window or something. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, this has been going only like a minute or more. Or so more. And it's so cool that it's running. I know a lot of people on on YouTube, they only put like 30 second, 34 second videos or like even just a minute video and they don't explain stuff, you know. The, the stop switches that I have, they're from sewing machines, you know, so, electronic sewing machines, all that stuff, you know, you can get, you can get them from microwaves, you know, scrap a microwave, but, when I first started this, you know, if I can get this thing to focus, um, the cube was grayed out. If you have a grayed out cube, go back and look and make sure that you pick the right firmware. Because in Slicer, I found out... See, I have Marlin firmware, and I went back in the Slicer, and I found out that somehow it got switched, and it wasn't set to Marlin firmware anymore. It was set to some other firmware, and that's why it was coming, you know, grayed out, you know, for the G-code and all. So, anyway, got to do some tie wrapping. <laughs> oh, it's almost done. Video is at 14 minutes or so. This is so awesome. One of my ideas was to be able to print uh, sewing machine parts and all. So, I don't know. You can print almost anything if you make the uh, sketch for it and stuff. The CAD drawing. Once I get all the parts made, 
plastic, I'm going to put the plastic parts on it or whatever, you know, just to straighten it out. These rods are not straight, really. Um, you can see that there's only one bearing in here, so the end, the end of this, okay, it can go like this. It'll, it'll wobble as it's going up and down. So that's why I need to print the parts so I can get that so that it doesn't wobble and I'll get better prints out of it. So. This is so cool. This is my first fully done item on this thing. Like I said, I've been, I worked on it in 2016. I had a heart attack in 2015, so I couldn't do much of anything. So what I could do is I, I built this so I could build parts and stuff. You know, because I couldn't do much of anything else. You get a bypass and everything, you can't pick anything up. Everything becomes a pain. Uh, you're not allowed to pick up anything more than you know, like a couple of pounds. And you you feel it, you know it when you pick it up. So. I wanna see where this thing ends up when it's done and all. Let's see what it does. I think it's taking a little bit longer than what it said. It's almost up to 20 millimeters, so. Oh, it sounds like it's covering the top. Yeah, covering the top. almost done and if it doesn't come out square okay I don't consider that a failure because my other ones these are my other ones down here you know and I don't consider these failures because I got it to print <laughs> I gotta put you know it put something on the bed so you know I don't count failures it's like to me, there's no such thing as a failure. It's, you just found a way that you couldn't do it. <laughs> you know? And now you know you can't do it that way. So, so it's really not a failure of any type. Torio and Alan were telling me, put the stop switch at the bottom. Having the, having the Z bed down at the bottom is less work and stuff. And so I finally listened. I was trying to make it original, but you can't tell what's original with, you know, what they were making back then. So. In the Mendel 90s were supposed to be some of the best computers, uh, printers. Look at this. Okay, so it puts it over there. So now the cube's there. So it's just dripping a little bit. And it's done. It's a cube. Look at that. Cool. <laughs> Is it hot? The bed's hot. Bring it forward. And then see, it turned green. It was a red cube in the beginning and it turned green. The green layers are the ones that are finished. So let's, let's home why. So 
So that's one of the things that I'm going to have to learn to do. How to home stuff, put it in the slicing program. So, we have a cube. And is the cube... Look at that. It's almost exactly 20 millimeters. Look at that. <laughs> the question is, is, can I get this off the plate? <laughs> I don't have anything to pull it off. The plate is hot. You know? So, I think we can turn the plate off. Turn that off. Turn that off. So, I turn the plate and everything. And as it cools down, it will probably come off. But, it is a 20 millimeter cube. <laughs> and what I, what I put down, I used a glue stick on this. I don't see where I put it. It's probably in the box across the room now. Um, but I did, I, I smeared glue stick on it. I put a 5 millimeter band around the bottom, you know, just so that it would adhere to the, the base. So, cool. Okay, well, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. I'm very happy that it worked. Um, thanks to Ortoria and Alan, you know, for helping me out. So, cool. Um, have a good day. Please like and subscribe. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Mm,